So, hi everyone. Uh, this is my first time after like four or five years, uh, publicly speaking. So give me a bit of time to get into the role in the zone, uh, if you don't mind. Um, so yeah, long story short, uh, my name is Nemo, or Nemanja in the Balkans, but usually people call me Nemo because it's super confusing for them to pronounce the name, right? And uh, today I will talk, for, uh, talk to you about the communities in DeFi. Specifically, we'll be orienting to one of the communities that I'm part of, an administrator, which is called Lobster DAO. Um, just like out of curiosity, how many people here actually know what are DAOs? Can you raise hand? Okay, how many people here know about Uniswap, for example? Okay, about MakerDAO, Year in Finance. Okay, sweet. So we have like 50 50 type of audience. Cool. So just a bit about me. Um, I'm in blockchain space for the last five or six years, from 2016 to be uh, precise. Started as an engineer that was playing as like it happens usually with a blockchain space. Started with playing, can I code some algorithmic bot that can trade for me and make me millionaire? Um, as most of engineers realize really shortly after that, that's almost impossible and really hard. <laughs> um, so basically after that I went into the role of becoming a chief product officer for a company called Sentiment, which is on-chain analysis platform, uh, doing data streams and uh, doing a different metrics based on those things. Uh, I'm one of the members, and you met some of the people already, uh, of Daedalus, that is Angel Collective, that is operating for almost two years now, uh, funding and helping founders uh, in the whole crypto space. Uh, there is no specific part of the, of the space that you're interested in. It's like between like GameFi, DeFi, NFT space, Metaverse space, all kinds of like different things. Basically, the ethos is it's a white board of blockchain, and right now what we want to see is fund amazing, interesting projects uh, that will likely help us grow the whole ecosystem. Accept that helping out to numerous DAOs, as I mentioned, uh, numerous projects. One of the projects that we'll speak today about is Lobster DAO. And without further ado, I want to kind of like first to start with explaining what are the DAOs. So if we would go like with the, the usual explanation, that's like a decentralized autonomous organization is an organization guided by rules encoded as a computer program that often, often transparent controlled by the organizational members and not influenced by central government. In other words, they're member-owned communities. Now, what that means in practice, it's kind of like a totally different thing. As you can imagine, there is like a lot of different DAOs that have like, um, this is irritating me, sorry. So like, there are like a lot of different DAOs, there are a lot of different communities that are either in the DeFi space, either investment type of the communities, either type of the communities that are around like uh, the, the and there's some educational program, research, and whatnot. So in many practices, that's like a different protocols, different ideas based, different topics based. And then we have like, usually they are either tokenized or token gated communities, and they're operated via multisig. How many people here in the audience know what multisig is? Can you raise your hand? Okay, let me elaborate shortly. So in other words, in simple terms, multisig is the way that uh, you add multiple members, multiple addresses uh, on the Ethereum, for example, multiple addresses uh, to be signers of any type of transaction that is happening from a certain wallet. So that is basically a way wallet controlled by other addresses. What that means is that if you make a multi-signature uh, address, it basically you can say five out of nine people need to sign this transaction and approve in order for the transaction to happen. That is super important, especially if we are talking about running the treasuries, which you will understand in a minute why that is kind of like a bits and pieces about the DAOs. Now, one of the challenges that is happening constantly when we talk about DAOs and one of the things that people always criticize is like, well, what's the point of this DAO? Why, why it can't be like just a regular organization? Why we needed one more thing on top of this? And the beauty that the DAOs are representing is a different types of the experiments and organizations that we are right now running in the blockchain space um, that are operated via these multi six. So in my opinion, and to give you some of the examples of what DAOs can be is, this is an example of year in finance. 
Um, basically, that's a yield aggregator for people that don't know. Right now, in the DeFi space, we have a numerous tokenized products that are either decentralized exchanges, either lending borrowing, uh, borrowing platforms, and usually they reward people by giving them a certain amount of their own tokens of that platform uh, for people to hold. Now, obviously, because it's permission, uh, permissionless market, all of these tokens have some values. So yield aggregators are there to basically help you out to compound your yields. Meaning if you deposit certain type of stable coin, like USDC for example, it will give you the, the opportunity to compound that reward. What it will do for, the, for you is basically it will go there, uh, like supply liquidity in a, certain, in a certain protocol for you, claim the tokens on some time basis, like either a days or two days or a couple of hours, sell those tokens for underlying asset. So if you deposit it to USDC, it will sell the tokens for the USDC and compound your position. I like to call it like basically a smart savings account. Some people will disagree with me, but that's basically like one of the things. And so year in finance is one of the shiny examples of uh, the DAOs in our industry. It's operated by like 90% pseudonymous people that others never heard the voice of nor see their face. And they're collaborating together, managing a lot of billions of dollars. In the peak of the year in finance, they were managing six point something billion of dollars, maybe even more. Um, the other examples that we can say like, that we have like, uh, for the DAOs is like, for example, Pleaser.org. Basically a collective of the, let's say, blockchain natives and blockchain OGs uh, that collectively put together ETH to buy a certain NFT assets that they find valuable for the historical reasons. One of the assets that they bought was uh, Julian Assange uh, support NFT asset or Snowden type of asset that was again uh, supporting people, especially like focused on the, the news and freedom of speech and whatnot. So those are the, just some of the examples. And basically the whole idea of this DAO is the members have a percentage of ownership of whatever is their treasury. Their treasury is all of the, uh, are all of those NFTs that they have. So imagine if in the future, for whatever reason, this organization decides to sell any of those uh, art, collects, uh, art that they collected, they will distribute that amongst their members based on the percentages of ownership. The percentage of the ownership was representation how much money each member put in at the beginning. Let's say that the minimum was 10 ETH per member and maximum was 10 ETH per member. You can kind of like do the calculation. They were kind of like putting the money together and then based on that, they had a tokenized representation of the ownership. And one of the DAOs that I'm part of and I'm happy to present here and we'll go about those is a lobster DAO. A lobster DAO is basically a community run chat. It started in 2018. I encourage you to go to the link to kind of like check it out. Um, basically, the main idea was a research and educational place for all of the people that are enthusiastic about the blockchain and really want to have a meaningful discussions, debates, and understanding on what's going on in the whole blockchain space. Um, my personal opinion when we talk about DAOs and what I like to call minimum viable DAO, for me is like having a a means of uh, having a chat such as like Discord or Telegram where people can communicate on a fast pace, like ongoing pace. Then the other part is treasury, obviously, to have like something that you govern together as a community and do something as a community together that is beneficial for the community or whatever reasons that you as a community vote for, which goes with the voting that I mentioned here, which is tools such as snapshot.org or other tools, there is like a lot of different dApps that help people govern their own protocols. Meaning, I want to spend some certain amount of money um, to, let's say, be sponsor of this conference as a lobster DAO. What, we, what, we, what would happen there is some of our community members that want to run that initiative, they would write a proposal explaining all of these things, give some time to the community members to ask these questions, clarifying questions, debate about things, possibly even to update. Maybe, maybe we discuss to be bronze sponsor and then, then some uh, members are pushing for the gold sponsorship or vice versa, whatever, in this current example, right? And then after that, you put this for the voting on the snapshot, which after the voting pass on the certain quorums and all of these things you kind of like can predefine, right? Uh, after that, what you do is you basically decide to transfer the money from our multi-sig in order to finance the whole sponsorship. We do the signing based on the multi-signature signs. 
How we decided that was when we started the Lobster DAO, we decided to have like 20 different people that were volunteering to be uh, people that are signers on the multisig, uh, with the promise that they will be the ones that will be like truthful, honest, and guide the community in the best way. Um, as I said, like that, com that, that is sometimes a pain in the ass in the sense that you need at least like 15 people to sign some certain transaction, and then you can imagine like asynchronously trying to find, to uh, remind those 15 people to sign the transaction can be sometimes really painful. And then um, I always encourage this way to create the long-form proposals, which you can use Discord platforms or forums or anything that is like that, right? To encourage people to discuss and be there in the community. In my opinion, those things are super important when it comes to DAOs because remember that 99% of these people never saw each other, never heard the voice, don't know each other, have the aliases, have the profile pictures that are totally um, out of this world or like artistic. Um, so it's really important to start seeing who are the good people in the community, who are people that are actually contributing community, because the beauty of the DAOs is giving this um, opportunity for people to go like, just start contributing slowly, and in one moment finding themselves in this particular organization, trying to grow the organization. Especially hard in a headless organization such as DAOs in most of the cases. Um, so to now go like a bit about the history of the Lobster DAO. Started, as I said, like, um, started in the summer of 2018. Um, historically, after Andre Kronje was, uh, so before that, Andre Kronje was running something that it was called Crypto Code Reviews uh, back in 2018, and he decided to close that chat. So it kind of like started as we need a new chat for people that were part of that community. We need a new chat to continue discussing about different protocols. Are they good or not? <coughs> Can we trust the people that are behind that? Understanding the code, discussing about the code, possible exploits, how quality everything is, right? Um, starting evenly, as I said, today Lobster DAO is like 18,000 members. You can imagine how challenging it can be to run 18,000 uh, people Discord. Uh, but in my opinion, the most important thing is if people have a similar ethos and if all administrators, that is like, I think, 60 of us in total right now, if they have the same ethos and, uh, and uh, understanding how it should be, uh, how the community should be run, we wouldn't have, like, we don't have any problems. Because of that, like, we have, like, as I said, like, we have a main chat, which is like a main lobster group with 8,000 members. We have NFT and Avenue. In this bull cycle that was happening in the last like one year, there was like more and more projects that were interested in the whole NFT space. Therefore, there was a natural decision to kind of like open up the chat that will solely focus about anything gamify, metaverse, NFT collections and whatnot. And then we have like a token gated chat, which I'll explain later on how that works and uh, how is that connected with Lobster DAO. Um, Lobster DAO is basically um, stepped in there in 2018 to fill this role, to help out people understand as much as possible about the space and make a meaningful decisions. Not just about their investments, but also understanding how this whole um, crazy world that we started building works. Uh, possibly like finding a job, possibly suggesting some things, and also helping each other out. Um, as I said, like it's really tough to run 18,000 members community uh, on Telegram, but with strict moderation. And when I say strict, it's really strict. Meaning, like, if you now join there and start asking questions that are like what I should buy or something like that, I guarantee you in less than 15 minutes you'll be permanently banned from the community. Then you will ask somebody of the moderator, say, hey, please, can you let me in? And most probably that would happen six to eight months from now. Like, it's that much. So people are coming with extreme cautious, which is super cool in my opinion. I know that sounds scary, but this community is super friendly to anything that is related to the meaningful discussions that are kind of like helping each other out. Either by t expressing your opinion about certain protocols, expressing your opinions about certain teams, but not about will the price go up, will the price go down? What should I do with my investment? Should I buy this token or should I buy that token? It's more focused about research, analysis, and helping people understand more the whole, and navigate the whole space. Um, what, what we are kind of like proud of when we talk about the Lobster DAO is this, it's really hard, and I'm not saying that because I feel really good about Lobster, but it's really uh, just like that. It's really hard to name other community that have more concentrated um, 
amount of DeFi and crypto enthusiasts that are founders of different protocols. And 99%, if you are looking for any type of protocol that exists in the whole DeFi space, let's say, or even in the NFT space now, you can search and find the founders in that group. Um, all of the media outlets, all of the founders of media outlets are there. Basically, it became kind of like a town hall for the crypto space. Um, one of the two things that like kind of like helped out the lobster DAO to grow where the where it is right now. The the first gimmicky type of thing was, if you remember or like uh, I don't know how many how many of you know actually about Curve Finance. Can you raise your hands? I'm just curious. Okay, half the group. So Curve Finance is one other decentralized exchange, tokenized decentralized exchange, and in the start of this cycle, uh, start of the cycle that was like almost two years ago, I think now, um, that community didn't have a token. So that, that protocol didn't have a token at the start. But as you know, like with the whole idea of the DeFi rewarding and into, uh, like rewarding and tokenizing the communities, in one moment when the curve finance in the like kick, kick off of the whole bull run in the summer, um, the curve finance, uh, curve finance was starting their token, and somebody from the community that we still don't know in the Lobster DAO actually found that contract, a contract for the token on the testnet, deployed it on the, uh, uh, on the mainnet, and you could literally say that Lobster DAO kick-started the whole curve, uh, curve finance. It was ridiculous. It was really fun those two hours because curve team didn't want to confirm those things until they were 100% sure what happened because they were out of the blue. And in the same time, 10,000 people in that moment asking should deploy my assets, or should I farm, what's happening right now? So it was really a beautiful, chaotic moment for us. And that was something that like kicked off the news across the whole media outlets that like some community called Lobster DAO kick-started one of the biggest tokenized projects. And the second one was in the whole craze of the profile picture NFT, I'm not hundred, bear in mind, like maybe I'll be salty a bit here, but like I'm not hundred percent against the profile picture NFTs, but I'm hundred percent against meaningless profile picture NFTs that don't have any type of like idea what they want to do further. And a lot of these kind of like just money grabs that die out, right? But in one moment for fun, we were like, why don't we actually do a meaningful commemorative NFT drop? Um, we found one of the artists to make the art for the Lobster DAO. And we did like some, we aggregated the data from the from our community, a couple of data scientists from the community cleaned the data, and basically we did a commemorative drop for all of the community members based on their interaction and how they were like, uh, how they were contributing to the Lobster DAO community. Um, so what happened there is that kind of like it was an art event for us to reward all of these uh, community, uh, active community members. Um, but what happened like in one moment that we were not thinking about is that we are actually rewarding um, one, like the biggest OGs, the strongest developers, the strongest white hat hackers, uh, the, 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 the founders, the, 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 the main members of the whole crypto space. And in that moment, I would say mostly in the DeFi space. And we were actually we're not aware that we are making a map of the the best or the most notable uh, addresses across the whole uh, the whole crypto space in the Ethereum space. I'm talking. Um, so what happened there is like because of that, some other people started pr purchasing the Lobster NFTs on the secondary markets for like five, nine, ten ETH in one moment. And what started naturally to happen is that the, 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 this list became like the, the main list for all of the projects that would like to get the attention, feedback, and have kind of like tried to get some, let's call it quote unquote, organic growth for their protocols. Um, so different teams started approaching Lobster DAO, and different teams wanted to collaborate in any way with the Lobster DAO, either by rewarding addresses that hold the Lobster DAO that are depositing some assets in their protocol, or um, different uh, addresses that are doing some user testing. So anything that can be verifiable on chain, and that's kind of like a beauty of the DAOs, in my opinion, and the beauty of this space is that all of the contributions that you do on chain is publicly verifiable, and whatever you make, like if tomorrow we try to do the, some kind of user testing, and we put in the whole user testing some connection between the protocol and your address, that's a verifiable thing that can show to people that somebody actually did some work and is rewarded for the work. So naturally, as I said, like all of this is verifiable on-chain, and we started having more and more protocols wanting to contribute, to, to uh, collaborate with Lobster DAO. I want to kind of like to mention a couple so it started in the last like six months, we had like a gearbox, which is a leverage type of um, 
leverage farm slash aggregator uh, for the, 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 the blockchain space. They, they did like a user testing and drop of their tokens to, to, to the users from the Lobster DAO community. We had Empire Wallet, one of the wallets, the smart contract wallets, uh, that is giving you the multiplier uh, if you're holding NFT, uh, a Lobster NFT in their wallet. They are giving you a multiplier for farming, meaning like, like while you're having any assets in their wallet, you're farming a certain amount of their tokens, but if you're also holding Lobster down NFT there, you are having like a multiplier of 1.5. Coinlist, I don't know how many people know about Coinlist, but one of the, let's say, ICO launch platforms or launch pl platforms in general. Some of the notable projects that came from there, I think, are Flow, Near, Solana even. Uh, so you can imagine like how some of the people uh, that invested in those projects back then, from the financial perspective, gained like a lot. And because of that, like Coinlist was uh, getting like extremely, extremely harder uh, to be on the list uh, because like a lot of people want to uh, to buy a certain token, but it's just like too many people, right? So we did a collaboration for that with them that actually lobstered. NFT holders get some karma points that are giving them basically a priority list for those three months. Um, and so on and so forth. So these are just some of the, some of the examples. Uh, sadly, like we didn't announce one of the biggest ex uh, examples uh, for today. I, I need to wait like a bit more to have that announcement, but you get the point. So what is the next for the Lobster DAO and how I see this beautiful experiment? I'm seeing now more and more communities uh, across the crypto space, educational, research communities, any type of communities focused on the certain niche of the, of the space that are trying to do this, that are trying to do this kind of like connection between the DeFi and NFT space. And you can in certain way with these NFTs encourage users and holders to actively participate in different protocols across the whole ecosystem. And what we are actively working on right now in the Lobster DAO is pushing the partnership in a way that all of these people actually need to do something. Like one of the things that we would like to skip, of course, no, nobody has a problem with that, but like I personally would like to skip is I don't want for people in the Lobster DAO community to feel entitled just because they are Lobster DAO NFT holders that they're just like getting here and there airdrops. And I do think that that's not the smartest way to encourage the community and the growth of the crypto space. I definitely think that what we need to do is encourage good participants when they're actually like the, doing anything with your certain protocol. So what we plan to do here is kind of like continue with the token gated user research testings, general education, uh, focus groups and whatnot. We started working on the job board also, as you can imagine, like in one moment, we also opened something called Lobster DAO HR, which is basically like just a place where people can post, hey, we are hiring this or hey, I'm looking for a job. And we already like for the last couple of months, we're doing amazing connections between all of these people. and. As you can imagine, it's super cool to connect two of the sides and help them out, especially if they're part of the Lobster DAO community that, that gives some power and that gives some meaning in the, in, the, in the whole hiring process, right? And then educational and research content and community-driven uh, decision-making. What I mean by that is literally that. Like, I was randomly like, hey guys, do you want for me to apply to talk on BlockSplit about Lobster DAO? And just for us to start testing out going somewhere and talking about, uh, about this, we had like some meaningful decisions and discussions and we agreed that we should do that. So tomorrow it can be something else. We can decide to organize like a Lobster DAO conference and invite all of the, all of the big names. That can be one thing. Second thing can be like finance a game. Uh, third thing can be like finance and protocol, any type of these things, right? Um, I encourage all of you uh, to join us. These are all of the links of the different uh, different uh, Telegram channels and uh, the, the links for the Lobster DAO. And uh, thanks for coming to the talk. And I'm here for any questions. Hello, Cap. How's it going? <laughs> Hi, um, I have a question. Uh, how did you how did you decide to become a DAO? Because I, I've been part of Lobster chat from from some time, and it's one of the of the chats that has the best ratio of signal to noise. But um, what like what was the the reasoning behind? Hey, let's do a DAO, and uh, a second one that is connected. Yeah. What's the incentive to contribute to to Lobster DAO in particular? Yeah. Um, 
So it was literally organically out of the blue. Like as I said, like the first we for fun wanted to do the NFT drop, and we said to everybody, we are literally doing this lobster down NFT drop commemorative for all of your members, and we don't plan to do anything. But what started happening is people in the chat started asking, can they collaborate? Can somebody help to connect the dots, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And naturally, like 10 to 15 people from the community stepped up and said, okay, let us help. And then we needed to open a separate working group because of the craziness and chaos to kind of like focusly talk about these things. And then one thing led to another. We realized that like just from the lobster uh, open uh, on OpenSea, uh, the, the trading for the lobster down NFTs on OpenSea managed to build like a half a million dollars worth of uh, treasury for us. And we were like, okay, so we now have in our multi-signature half a million of dollars. Uh, let's do something meaningful with these type of things, right? So that was like a first part. And second part to answer the question, we are still experimenting right now like um what, like how to reward people. Right now, we decided because when we did a do we, when we did a drop, we uh, kind of like shared because of the, I guess, regulations and whatnot. People from the USA, some of the people did not want to claim their lobsters because of this and that. So what ended up is like I would say that 40% of the collection is still in the smart contract that multi signature can mint. So what we started doing is like all of us that are contributing to the lobster DAO, we are rewarding those people with the lobster NFTs. What you do with that is on you. Like you can use it in some wallet for all of these, I said, farmings or whatnot, or you can sell it on the open sea. I think that right now the floor for lobsters is 1.5 VEAT, which is kind of like a couple of thousand dollars for somebody. Um, and for a lot of con uh, community members, it was a meaningful amount of money in the previous like uh, 10 months, right? So those are like current situations. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. That's it? Thank you. 